What's up, Modern Stedders? You know what day today is? Today's Friday, and Friday is Modern Stedder Update. Woohoo! Let's go check on the pig since we're right here. Oh, whoops, no pigs! If you thought the pigs were still in here, you haven't watched the channel for a little while. Let's go see the pigs. They're out in pasture. Actually, we just get home from work, so we get to go release them and put them on pasture. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Good afternoon, Mrs. Pigs and Spots. What are you doing? Say, good Friday afternoon. Girls wanna come out? You gotta move it. I can't open the door if you leave your butt there. Let's run with the pigs. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? Huh? Wanna run? Let's run. We can't even keep up. They're having so much fun. What are you doing? You enjoying your pasture, huh? I think you are. Yeah. You like your pasture, don't you? At night when I've been coming to lock up their pen, they've been sleeping out here in the briars. Crazy pigs, it's pretty funny. If it's not too dark and I remember, I'll bring the camera back out tonight when I go to lock up the pen. Let's go to New York City! Woohoo! What? Wait a minute, where'd New York City go? It's not here. If you want to see that video, I'll put a link to that right here. We'll go check on New York City in a minute. Let's go see the garden. I'm telling you, that hasn't moved. That's still in the same spot. We just got another new one I can show you. What are you doing? You checking out where New York City used to be? Huh? We had a few viewers ask, what did it look like under New York City? Well, I'll show you. This is what it looked like under New York City. This right here is where the ducks had their nest. So this is the material that the ducks had collected for their nest. There's a lot of hay in here, feathers, and like a lot of small brush, shrubby stuff. And that's what they were using, some sticks, to make their nest out of. Let's go check on this garden together, because I'm not lying. I haven't been in this garden since the last Modern Stedder update. That's how much I neglect this thing. No. We put all the work in at the beginning of the year, and now we're just waiting on Mother Nature to do her thing. We'll keep an eye on it, and if we need to add any amendments, we do. But for the most part, right now, if you do the gardening right, you don't have too much work to do. We gotta rest up, because harvest season will be busy. We got some Japanese beetles. Get out of here. So the tomatoes are doing awesome. They're still growing really good. That one looks like it's getting a little bit of bottom end rot, probably with all the rain we've been getting. So we'll feed that to the chickens when we go over to New York City. But look at those tomatoes. Oh, that thing's beautiful. Oh, yes. Doing so good. All right here, you can see the broccoli. And I would say the Japanese beetles got it. But that's okay. If we're going to have to let them eat something, why not let them eat? the broccoli that we can't use right now. During the heat of the summer, broccoli doesn't do good anyway, so we'll let the Japanese beetles have that. And they can leave the rest of our plants alone, right? It's a good trade-off. These got so much rain, they're starting to split a little bit, but we'll leave that one. But them, look at those, all oh, looking so good. These are all heirloom organic tomatoes. Our onions aren't doing too bad. Let's see. They're growing, growing slowly. The beets that I planted have not sprouted yet. Oh, I lied. Look at that, there's one little guy right there. We'll have to keep our eye out. There'll be more sprouting up pretty soon. These radishes are doing halfway decent. It's just all the rain we've been having just compacted our soil. That's another reason why not to use just dirt. We'll get some compost in here, hopefully come fall. It'll be too late for this growing season, but we'll get some compost in here from where we had the winter chicken coop set up. Peppers are looking nice. We still got a bunch of small buds. 
No peppers growing yet, but we will. Oh, look at those flowers, aren't they beautiful? Look at that. Flowers mean we're gonna have peppers. Yes. Now these are exciting me. These beets that Gina mulched, they're doing halfway decent right here, but look at these guys. Look at that. Oh, they're so beautiful. That excites me. I see pickled beets in my future. And you know what pickled beets mean? It means red pee. I'm telling you, if you eat too many beets, you're gonna have a reddish tinge in your urine. Try it, and then leave it in the comments down below. We'll eat beets for dinner, and if we eat a lot of them, the next day, yeah, we'll have a little bit of a red tinge to our pee. Let your kids try it, they'll love it. It'll be a great way to get them to eat some beets. Look at those, oh, they're so beautiful. Look at the color purple flowers. Oh, yes. I'm not seeing any small baby beans yet, but all those flowers are beautiful. Look at that one. And then over here, oh, we got a weed. We better do some weeding, oh. All right, that's enough weeding. Look at these ones. These are flowering out, but they're not quite as pretty. Oh, we'll be getting some green beans pretty soon. And then we're gonna have to stop planting some more beans in this area. We'll stagger them a little bit. And then over here, we got some more onions that we planted at a different time. These are actually doing better. Look at that. That's beautiful. It sure is. Cover it back up. Strawberries are doing good. We're not planning on getting too much fruit off of them this year. They're in here for next year. Look at that corn. Look at all this corn, it's just doing awesome. It's jamming. My mother-in-law was over here this past weekend looking at it. You know what she wanted to do? She wanted to pick my green beans. She's like, you got something growing up your corn. I said, I know I do, I put it there. She's like, what do you mean? You're growing two crops together? I said, yeah, they work in a symbiotic relationship together. Some people, huh. Here is one of the green beans. It looks like something or somebody ate it. We've got another one right here. Another one over here. And we planted a bunch of pole bean seeds last week. I guess I said it wrong. They're not Siberian or Siberian pole beans. They're sea bean. I don't know. I'm terrible with words and dictation. So it's, I don't know, it's another kind of pole bean. But we're gonna grow them out and see what happens. Thanks, Earl. We almost left this area without checking on the carrots. Man, what was I thinking? The carrots are doing awesome. Look at those guys. I just hope they can grow nice and long. Ah, uh, rutabagas. Yeah, they didn't do anything. So we'll have to plant something else in this area. Here's the outdoor kitchen. Yeah, that hasn't changed very much. We did use it this past weekend when we harvested our pasture-raised heritage meat birds. If you guys didn't see that video, I'll leave a link right here to it. We'll be starting on this project again pretty soon. We're gonna be building a post and beam kind of sort of structure. You'll have to wait and see what we're planning on doing there. One thing I almost forgot to talk about is in October, Han Hewn Farm is gonna be doing a three-day class here. It's gonna be a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's gonna be on we're gonna butcher the pigs, and we're also gonna turn the meat into sausages, hams, bacon, all different kinds of charcuterie. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below that you guys can click on and go on over to Hand Hewn Farm and find out all about the class and the cost. Let's check out the hay bale gardens. These guys are just jamming. It's jamming. Look at this. Last week during the modern steader update, I had to tuck this plant in right here. And look at that. We have a buttercup squash. And we have some more growing here. We gotta get this one up here. Look at that on the end. There's another buttercup squash. Look at that. It's a thing of beauty. I can't show it to you. See that thing of beauty right there? Oh, would you just look at that? Oh, it's beautiful. These guys are gonna be growing pretty soon and reaching over to that cattle panel. Oh. Ooh, did you see that? Oh my goodness, that's a zucchini. That's so exciting, I can't wait till Gina gets home and I can show her. 
We're gonna be having zucchini in a couple of days. Oh, I'm so excited. These potatoes are going nuts. Let's try to just tuck those in the cattle panel. So let's just talk a few minutes about all these plants growing in our hay bales. These hay bales are from our winter chicken coop. We had them in the winter chicken coop as kind of like a windbreak insulation barrier in the greenhouse for the chickens. They had fun playing on them all winter long. It was kind of like a little playhouse for them. They were jumping up and down and on them, pooping on them. And then we put them outside. We let them sit in the rain with the chicken poop on them. And then the chicken poop kind of just like inoculated all through the hay bale. And then we brought them over here and we put some soil blocks in them. Boom, bada boom, bada bing, bada bam. And you know what happens after that? Bada boom, bada bing, bada bam. You get some zucchinis. Why wouldn't you do that? This is free food, effortless. All I had to do was buy some hay bales for the chickens, one paid for them once, for the chickens, so I didn't have to heat my chicken coop, and I don't heat my chicken coop, and they can get down to 30 below zero here Fahrenheit, and I don't heat my chicken coop. So I'm buying the hay bales as a heat source, and then I get to grow awesome food. And all I had to do for that was bring them over here, stand them on edge, and put some soil blocks in them. I haven't touched them since. I haven't watered them. I think I might have peed on them once. We probably peed on them, so if you count that as doing something, that's what we did. And then the potatoes, look at the potatoes. They're jamming. Look at that, they're just jamming. I don't know if we have any potatoes under there. We're gonna have to wait and see till the end of the season. That's just growing in some more spent hay from the winter chicken coop. And we got some more to go check out. Let's get going. All right, let's get to the squash plants. Look at that zucchini. Uh, these ones are, you know, every once in a while you'll get them. They won't take, but that's okay. We got plenty of plants. Over here we got summer squash. They're starting to do good. And then I just wanted to show you all the renegade tomato plants we have in here. I don't know where these came from. I just started seeing them the other day. We gotta have over a hundred tomato plants in here. They're just renegade. Must be from the pig's poop last year. We must have fed the pigs some tomatoes. I don't know, but get ready for this. We have a tomato right here, another tomato right there. That's a weed. Oh, oh. That's a tomato plant right there. Hold on, there's more. I've got a bunch of squash plants. That's not a tomato plant. Another tomato plant right there. Another tomato plant right there. And those are growing in shade. I just thought of that. That's crazy. Let's see if these tomatoes produce in the shade. If they do, I'm gonna have to save some seeds from them. But we got more tomatoes. This is, this, these tomatoes I just showed you is nothing. We gotta get out of here without breaking anything. You ready for this? I don't know if you can handle this. Ready? You ready? Look at all these tomatoes. These plants right here are all tomato plants. Look at them all. Growing in shade. Boom, boom, boom. That's a weed. I'm not done. Tomato plant growing in the shade of a squash. Is that a tomato plant? That's another tomato plant. Tomato plant. Tomato plant, under squash. That's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to see how these tomato plants are doing. I was thinking about digging them up and putting them inside our winter chicken coop and having a fall slash winter harvest of tomatoes, but I might have to leave, at least, I gotta leave at least some of them here in the shade and see how they do. And if they grow and produce fruit in the shade for us really good, I'm gonna plant them next year. That'll be like a new hybrid. Alumna Acre Tomato. That'd be pretty cool. All right, here's the purple cabbage and broccoli we planted yesterday. I haven't watered them in yet. Look at them, we're supposed to be getting rain tomorrow, so I'll let the rain water them in. They're just beautiful too, that's just a beautiful color. Some of them are a little wilty, because it's kind of hot out today, but for the most part, those are nice. Look at that. Kind of close that one up a little bit better. There we go. Those look nice. 
So those are doing good. They really haven't wilted that much considering I haven't done nothing to them. All right, Rufus, how we doing? Let's go and see the Icelandic chickens. Hey, Rufus, how we doing? Would you guys like a tomato? How about if I cut it in half? Hold on. Let me, oh, I didn't even get a chance to cut it in half and they stole it on me. <laughs> See, just because that tomato has bottom end rod on it don't mean we can't get something useful out of it. You know what I just traded it in for? I traded it in for two Icelandic eggs. That works for me. Thank you, ladies. And thank you, Mr. Rufus. We got some of your eggs in the incubator. Here's Blackie. She's doing really good. Look at her back. It's all healed up. Blackie, you did a great job. Ouch. I'm gonna set these eggs down right here so I don't break them while we're finishing up our update. Here are our Bard Rock pullets that that broody, that that silky slash Rhode Island red chick hatched out for us. She sat on them. We gotta get those four pullets in with the other six that we have left over from when we did our harvesting last weekend. All right, let's check on these ladies. Actually, let's move them first. They've got the grass pretty well eaten over here. Can you help me move them, Pluto? Let's do this. <laughs> yes, Mr. Biggs, we'll come and visit you in a minute. These ladies are doing really good. Here, let me stop this wrecking ball. My favorite chick is the one right here with the funky hairdo. You see that hairdo? So these pullets are about 13 weeks old. We got them on Craigslist, we're selling them. And if we don't sell them, we're gonna put them in New York City and we'll switch out some of the old ones. But if we do sell them, the money we get from them is gonna pay for all the feed that we've had for meat birds this year so far. So that's a win-win. We'll have raised our meat birds for free. I like that. Pluto's no fool. She found the right shady spot, huh? You find a good spot here? Let's go check on New York City. We better shut off the electric fence. I like how this has got a fancy button. Now my fence is dead. These poles are flexible. See that? So I can just push this down, put my leg over it, put my other leg over it and get right in. Oh, did somebody shut the door on you? So the chickens are really loving their fresh grass over here. We had somebody ask in the comments about our ducks, if they were meat birds or if they're egg layers. They're a dual purpose breed. They're khaki Campbells, so they're, the females lay eggs for us and the males, you can use them for meat and you can use the females too. They lay inside a nesting box inside New York City, if you saw it. They don't need a pond or anything. The only water they need is for drinking. That's one reason we got khaki camels, is they don't need a pond. See this hen right here? She's still broody. You can see how she's all puffed up. The other one's not. We got some awesome stuff to show you in the basement.
Pluto's going and bringing you over to the chicks. Let's go see the chicks. Still not sure in the breed yet. We haven't lost any, we still have 51. Pluto likes to drool over them. Huh, they're not yours. And we have right over here, are you ready for it? The three ducklings. They're doing great. They're a little shy and bashful. But they're all alive. Oh, we didn't really talk about that. The Icelandic chick that we had hatched out, he or she didn't make it. It was pretty disappointing, but they didn't make it. But that's all right, we have some more in the incubator that Jason from Coops and More sent us. Let's check on them. Today is day eight. Oh, you know what that means? We can candle them. Want to take one out and candle it? Video is getting long enough, so we'll save candle and the Icelandic eggs for another video. But these incubators, Jason from Coops and More sent us. If you guys want to go check out that website, they got some awesome products, and they gave the Modern Stetter a 10% off coupon code. I'm gonna put all that information in the description down below. And then over here, we have our kombucha. We're doing the continuous brew system. I bet you this batch is almost done. And when it is, we'll bottle it up and we'll do a second fermentation while we flavor it. The last batch we made, we made it blueberry. It was amazing. Talking about the blueberry kombucha made me thirsty for some. Isn't that pretty? Look at that nice color. If you guys want to see how we made this, I'll put a link to that video right here. If you hear a little noise, that's the pigs munching on some apples in the pasture. We hope you enjoyed today's Modern Stetter update. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it. It really helps the channel grow, and it has been helping. So I wanted to thank all the Modern Stetters for sharing the video and subscribing. And I wanted to thank all the new Modern Stetters. You can also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We post over there daily too. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.